from the Thai Cats Audio Network. This is the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. Yes, it is. And welcome to another episode of the Coach O Show with Luke Tasker. That's me. I'm joined, of course, by Orlando Steinhauer, Thai Cats head coach. This is our weekly update. And Coach, I will start off with just saying a big congratulations with the resounding win over the Red Blacks at Tim Hortons Field. Well done. Thank you. Yeah, winning is uh, winning is fun. Let's not get it twisted. There's there's nothing like it, and uh, there's no such thing as an easy win. So I'm you know proud of everybody, proud of the coaches, proud of uh, proud of the players, and uh, you know it, you know always appreciate those. But it's on to the next. Yep, back to work, especially with a short week. I know what it's like, but uh, I'm sure you had a similar uh, similar thought and feeling when your playing career had ended. I see, I watch a lot of football on TV. I'm watching all the CFL games. I see the NFL games and looks great, but I don't, I'm not, don't, I don't emotionally, it doesn't, doesn't affect me emotionally until I see a team that I care for win a game. And that's what I will always miss the most is that hour after the, a win in the locker room, you're, you don't even feel the bumps and bruises yet. You're just, uh, you're just living in that best moment of sports that winning games with guys that you care about and on a team that you love. And boy, that was a, that was a great one, uh, over this past weekend. So, uh, very well done. Was that the team's best performance all around? Uh, I think we were, we were solid in three phases. I think we could have, uh, you know, we're coaches, right? That we're always, uh, we're happy, but we're not satisfied. I think we could have played a little bit more consistent uh, in special teams, uh, not just because of, of the big return, but I thought we could have hit the ball a little bit better uh, punting it and, uh, and whatnot. But uh, for the most part, um, sometimes you can find a way to win three phases and that's, that's not, that's not often. And it's always argumentative, but uh, what we don't want to do is lose the hitting battle and we don't want to turn the ball over and we're, you know, we're able to take it away. So, um, you know, the, the splitting hairs and the fine fixtures and details uh, is in, you know, if you won and if you're happy with how you played in three phases, but the, what really needed to happen was to get the W. And so we, we found a way to do that. Yeah. One of the biggest differences to me as I watched from the booth was, you know, you're never going to have a perfect game. You know, the, the, every team, even the struggling Ottawa, they're going to make their plays at times during the game. Yes. They had a uh, pretty, be- uh, pretty large return uh, of course, but compared to some of the games that slipped out of the tie cats grip, every time a play went in Ottawa's favor, somebody or some unit would step up big and rip that momentum back into the tie cats favor. They, it never, the Ottawa was never able to string any success together because of, in a lot of cases, it was a turnover. I mean, just really cohesive and how all, and how every single unit added to uh, what ended up being an all tie cats uh, afternoon. One of my favorite moments did you know that Simone Lawrence at one point was tied for the CFL record for interceptions uh, in the middle of that game? <laughs> I did not know that. That's oh, a fun yeah. fact. That's a fun fact for sure. Well, he was tied for most uh, touchdowns on the tie cats early this season because he had those. Two, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, that one's not as good. That one's not yeah. as good to say. I know. And that's well behind uh, behind uh, now, but uh, until Carrie L Brooks took the record single-handedly to four interceptions, Simone Lawrence had the CFL was tied with a, a, a few players, but tied with uh, the most uh, uh, interceptions this year. So a different kind of season for Simone. I was very happy to, to see that. <laughs> Absolutely. He's deserving. He works yeah, kind of hard. He does kind of work hard, uh, endless, uh, endless energy, endless motor. He'll be tw- 21 forever. Uh, Simone Lawrence. No doubt. No doubt. Speaking of, uh, of his unit, the defensive unit, I just, I just want to, I want to just hear it from your like Describe to me the identity of the Ticats defense. They've been impressive all year, even in games that have uh, not gone the way that uh, the Ticats would have had them. But in your words, what is this, what is this unit all about? Well, I think we, we've, uh, you know, rather than a label, I think we do what we need to do each week to win. And if that means we're more zone pressure, then we're zone pressure. If we need to play, um, you know, more more straight zone, we do that. If we got to heat them up and, and blitz, then you can label us a pressure team. And, and you know from our time, that's that's the tie cat defense. Um, you know, we're going to be multiple. 
Um, we're going to, you know, we're going to, we're going to shotgun spray you a little bit. We're going to come from all angles or we may not uh, depending. And I think some of that has been, you know, when we've had some statement games where you're never going to stop the run if somebody wants to really commit to it. But I think we've done a great job uh, recently of containing it. Uh, obviously we'll have our hands full this week. So I think uh, our identity is, is being flexible, uh, being multiple. And then, you know, obviously you, you've got to be physical. So I, I really feel like there's a sense of us gelling, playing together, uh, understanding game situations where we we lacked a little bit of focus was in finishing a game. And, you know, to your comment earlier, I, you know, it wasn't the end of the game, but there was some chances for the momentum to swing. And we were able to, to put those out for the most part. I mean, you're never going to hold a team to, you know, probably under 200 yards, really, you know, or, or especially, you know, in the, you know, and just conversation, you're never going to hold anybody to zero yards. They're, they're going to do it, but it's how they're getting them. When are they getting them? Are they stringing drives together? And so that's kind of a long winded answer to, you know, I just really think we're multiple and flexible. I think Mark and Randy, Robin and Craig have just done an outstanding job and the player's job is always about execution. And so credit them also for executing. Yeah. It seems like a very cohesive group. And I remember years when I played, you know, that, the defense, the defensive back unit, there's always a real uh, family feel in that group. It's, it's guys, it's, it's being on the same page. And, and, and I remember some, some units in some years where it was like, man, they're, they are all on the same wavelength out there from an outsider's perspective. This, this defensive unit seems that way to me as well. And the most interesting thing about this defensive unit is there, it's hard to see a weak spot here. I think that it's probably the best front four in the CFL right now. And every single defensive back has an interception, including Frankie Williams, who's unable to, who's off the field right now. Right. And then you've got the three linebackers who we're, we're saying all of those names, every game, as they continue to make plays as Simone is Simone and, and, and finds times and meaningful times to change the game. Very, very impressive unit. To me, it's it's a it's it's probably the core. It seems like to me the core of this team is starts on that in that defensive side. Yeah, I think you know anytime you can pressure the passer, um, you know that's always going to start with like I said, containing or you know at times stopping the run, which is going to enable you to get after them. And um, you know it's they're a handful up there, right? And yeah. you know that doesn't mean that they're you know in D line. We always used to like to say, and and even back in the day when you played, it's just that being close does count, right? So it's not always going to show up in the stats, right? So you know we do a great job, I think, around here, and you've been in those meetings of of highlighting things, like. You know, I think we did an okay job at least. Probably it's not as much as we should have, but, you know, everybody's going to see the field goal go through the post, but nobody talks about the snapper and the hold. And I know you don't sign up to, you know, get attaboys all the time, but there is no kick if you don't do the other things. And so sometimes there's no interceptions if you don't get pressure. That doesn't always relate into sacks. And so, um, you know, I think they've, you know, you know, around here, that's just kind of the environment that we've created that everybody has – is here for a reason. You know, we all have enough friends. You're here because you can play football and you, you kind of fit the mold in the environment that, that we want to embody. So um, at that point, it's about you making your play. Now everybody can't make a play on every play and you have to be okay with that. Some people are going to have 15 chances to make a play in a game. Some people are going to only have two. You can't control that. Just make yours. So I think, you know, we've kind of adopted that. That's great. The, uh, it makes me think of uh, what you said about doing your job and maybe you're not the guy who gets praised, but everybody's got to, got to make their plays when they come watching that game from the booth, Lorenzo Malden. I couldn't, I couldn't stop. He like, if you just were casually looking at the field, your eyes got drawn to Lorenzo Malden because he's huge and he's running down the field, you know, like with the speed and athleticism of a small body player. I mean, there was a few explosions at the end of those coverages that were coming from him. I'm just going to guess that Jeff Reinbold said his name a couple times in the uh, special teams meeting on day one. Um, you know how those meetings are. And yeah. <laughs> uh, he was at the top of the list for, you know, what's taken that we'll keep in the house. But uh, yeah. um, I'm very proud of him. Long awaited. He had a lot of pent up uh, energy, but uh, sometimes you got to know how to harness it and, and when to unleash it. And uh, I'm glad he was on our team on that day. 
I'm glad he's on our team every day, but you you don't want to catch too many of those. Yeah, you do not want to let him get a 40 yard sprint and finish on finish <laughs> tackling you. I mean, that he it was awesome to watch him. And then he got some, he was in on defense a little bit. And I mean, I'm sure he was exhausted at the end. I, he stayed on the field one play. And I, I was thinking, he's just got to be tired, man. He's been sprinting for miles out there, but really impressive to see him. And, and, uh, to me, it's a testament to see a guy like that who has not had his name mentioned all year, who's been struggling with adversity, but then he comes out and makes a difference at a point in the season when it's when things started getting start getting real. Absolutely. And, and those, you know, those those DI positions are, you know, they're coveted. Those aren't, yeah. you know, you know, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but that's not a backup position. That's an impact position. And so you're on the roster. Right. And so. Um, that's, that's what you have to do. You know, I mean, everybody's required to do that, but that's not a backup spot. Like you're a starter on teams and you're probably versatile on the side of the ball that you're on. And there's something to be said for that. It takes a special person, uh, a, to take that in and then B to execute it. Yeah. Well, he did fantastic. The, uh, let me ask you, so has Jeff Reinbolt, uh, have the uh, rewards doubled yet? Or are we in playoff reward system yet or, or not? No, he bought a house. So it has, <laughs> oh, you went cheap on it. It, it no, has no, well, no. it didn't go cheap, but it hasn't doubled, Luke. It hasn't okay. doubled. <laughs> okay, well, good. The, every uh, every uh, postseason, as Jeff Reinbold hands out, you know, for big plays or whatever, and you get to the playoffs, and, and then Jeff starts doubling things weekly. And by the time That's you right. make a tack, you make a tackle in the Grey Cup, and you get you know a, you know a nice little boost there. So <laughs> yeah. that's fun stuff. But the uh, so offensively. Yeah. Offensively, that was the best. Uh, that was the best, cleanest, uh, best performance of the season so far. I'll just, for me, uh, the biggest moment I think as a turning point for the offensive unit this year was the fourth quarter in scoring territory, get backed up to go, and it's first and fifteen. And you think this is the this is a classic, an offense trying to find themselves ends a drive with a penalty here. And that's just, and then you got to try again, battle back. It's third and two before making the decision to go for that play. Are you a part of that? Do you leave that up to Tommy? What was that decision process like? Well, you know, earlier in the game, we had been stopped on a second and short and then followed by a third and short. And you know, I, I'm well aware of the math. I'm not real good at it, but I do know that it would have put us up at two, a three score game. Mm -hmm. But there's some statements that need to be made and so a vote of confidence that sometimes needs to happen on a football team. And to go away with a field goal right there, while it might have made logical sense, it didn't make any sense, in my opinion, at that point for our football team, whether we got it or not it's a vote of confidence that we're going to need to make plays like this. If we want to be the team that we desire to be and they responded. And that was the reason, the meaning behind it, you know, so, you know, I made the call and uh, you know, credit, obviously Tommy makes the call, they play call. And then the, you know, obviously the players got to execute. So, um, and a lot of things got to go right on that. You know, that, right. Yeah. And it, I mean, you got, first of all, you got to be on side. It sounds simple, but if you're outside, it doesn't matter. You can't hold, you can't bobble the snap. You can't make an errant throw. It can't get knocked down. And it sounds like little things, but all that can happen. And it didn't. So that was kind of what went behind that loop. Mm -hmm. Well, I loved the uh, earlier in the game, Tommy's decision to do the, to bring Dane in and to set up for the quarterback sneak on the second and short. I am a huge proponent of the second and short take a, take a chance, take a shot at something. You're going to get another try if you, if it goes wrong. And I was almost, I was preparing my negative comment in the booth and then sure enough, you know, to go for it on second and one and sure enough, uh, amazingly executed little, uh, you know, uh, uh, rolling pass from Dane out of the pocket. Can you speak a little bit to the involvement of Dane? Obviously Jeremiah, uh, had to leave. It looked like his nose got punched or something like that. And, came back in, but talk to me about the combination and the use and the ability to use both of those guys. Well, the ability to use them, first of all, starts with their ability. Uh, the second is the confidence that's been instilled, um, you know, in the coaching staff by them. And with, with Dane and the third thing, the factor is, is that authentically they're each other's 
they both want to start. That's that's a given. Wanted that since we signed them both, right? That's never going to change. Um, but once a decision's made, they are true teammates. And so uh, the plan was to, oddly enough, the plan was to play both of them. It's something that uh, mm. Tommy and I talked about, and both and the quarterbacks knew that, and, and the football team knew that. Uh, going into that game, uh, not we didn't have a set amount. We just knew that we said that both would play. It just so happened that, you know, it happened because Jeremiah, you know, he was leaking a little bit out there. Right. right. So that's interesting. And is it safe to say going forward, these guys are both going to be contributors throughout the year? I would never rule it out. But, uh, you know, all we're doing is mapping out the game plan for this week. And I think there's a chance that you you, you may see both. Uh, you may not. And that's not a coy statement. It's, it's you know, the game plan still being developed, uh, you know, how how we do it around here. And it's, you know, it's obviously going to be day three or our game day that, that we like to refer to it as. So um, we just, I think we're in a fortunate position that we have two quarterbacks that we know can get it done. Um, it's always going to be a challenge and we'll get asked every week, which we're prepared for that. As soon as we sign them both, we're going to get asked every week who's starting and, and what if somebody struggles and um, you know, to which my answer is going to be, it depends how the game's going. Yeah. Um, I know both Jeremiah and Dane personally, and I think obviously very highly of both of these guys, but I have to say this answer of the question that I'm about to ask is not obvious to me. And I wonder what your take on it is. Do these guys, are these guys playing better knowing that there's a chance that they get taken out of the game? Are they playing better because they're both out there and healthy? Well, I, I can't, they'd be better, better to ask uh, when it comes to that. But the reason that, you know, we, we do what we do is and how we worded that to the quarterbacks is whoever is starting, I don't want them looking over their shoulder that if they don't yeah. play well, they're out. That, that's not the goal here. Like there's going to be grace given. Nobody's going to play perfect, right? There's going to be, mm. unfortunately, there might be some balls that hit the ground. There might be drops. Uh, you don't you don't necessarily know how it it's going. Um, I think that the comfort is that if somebody's really struggling, you're not sitting there saying, "Well, he's going to have to work through it." The person behind him is not capable. And I don't, you know, I think that's sometimes is the case throughout the league. Like you're, you're going to just ride one out just because that's what you have. Well, yeah. we have the luxury of obviously some having people, no matter who's starting to go in there and get the, get the job done. So there's no short leash, you know? And so it, playing better, you know, I just think they're both, uh, you know, like I said, they're both capable. They both know where they stand and, you know, it's never going to change that both of them want to start. Hmm. It's amazing. I mean, something is correct. Something's right in the formula and maybe it has to do with just their two, their two guys who care about each other and the team. And it seems, you know, receiver is different. There's always a, 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 a possibility that if you just string a couple bad games together, you know, there's, there's, you're in a room of 10 guys who could also do your job, right? right. Well, a quarterback, it's sort of different for quarterbacks and it's amazing, but it seems to me like, I mean, Jeremiah, I have just never have seen him play so consistently and so well as he did in that game. Uh, and sure enough, he does it at a time where, you know, Dane, Dane is back and, and uh, able to play. So something's right in those guys' psychologies about the <laughs> idea of them both being uh, ready to go. But just another exciting uh, piece and this exciting dynamic to the 2021 Tie Cats and uh, coach, there's four, four games left in the season and you've come off the best win of the year so far. Uh, I imagine the energy and the attitude is positive and, uh, and, and high energy. Uh, you said you get right back to work on day one this week, you make your corrections. What's the message with a month left in the season here and with everything riding and, 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 and your fate in your hands, what's, what's the message to the team right now? Just to stay in the moment, uh, we'll control what we can control. Just the same messaging from training camp. That's, that, uh, that's what, uh, that's what can re really remain consistent, right? Is, is that messaging. So, um, you know, we, all we can control is practice right now. And we know what, what's out ahead of us, but that's just the, the schedule. But, you know, we, like we say around here, we, you know, we know the end goal, but we won't, we're not going to end watch. 
like that does nothing for us except for hinder our performance. So uh, what we do control right now is our day three meeting. And are we going to be attentive? Are we going to be a little bit better in this meeting than we were the meeting before? And when we head out to practice, you know, are we able to focus and, and, and get the job done? So, so that's the messaging. It's, it's what's in front of you that day. And then, you know, obviously on game day, then, then we'll, the focus will adjust because now it's, you know, it's game time. So that's, that's the messaging and it doesn't change because, you know, that's just what we believe. And, you know, it does, does that mean that we don't frame the situation or I don't let them know that, you know, we're on two short weeks? Absolutely. It's our job to prepare them. It's my job to prepare them and, and give them the best opportunity. It's late in the year. There's a lot of, a lot of hits, a lot of bumps, a lot of bruises. And, you know, for some of these guys that have played, you know, you sports, you know, and, and you, you, you've kind of went through this being uh, in the Ivy league that, you know, you don't play 12 game seasons. Right. And so for some of these guys, they're working on two seasons. So, so I like to tell them sometimes that this is their freshman and their sophomore year all bottled up into one, um, you know, so, yeah. you know, it's something that they haven't experienced. And, and so they kind of have to go through it and uh, you just have to be mindful of that. Yeah. Well, coach, we'll call it there. I know you got to get back to, uh, get back to the film, get ready for day three. That's right. Uh, we will see you this weekend and uh, we're closing in on it. Exciting. Good to see the team is operating at a high level as you get ready to go into the, uh, to the end stretch here of the regular season. So coach, great talking with you. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, looking forward to the rest of our uh, talks throughout the season. Awesome. Thanks Luke. Have a great one. The coach O show with Luke Tasker, like subscribe and find out what coach is thinking every Tuesday.